Um, we are unfortunately running out of time, so we really, and we've covered a lot of territory, a lot of different things, and yet there are probably another six or seven cards we will not have time to get to. Um, so we, we've got one final question that will go to all of you, and I think it's a good summary question. And I'm going to just arbitrarily make a decision because we're running late on time. We limit it to one minute. Because I know you can all respond in a minute to this question. And what would and the question is, what would you say is the district's greatest strength and its greatest weakness? And for this wrap-up question, we'll we'll um, do it in this order. Uh, Mr. Dabo first, uh, Mr. Cabrera second, um, Ms. Godfrey third, Ms. Dalma, oops, then Ms. Jeffrey. Did I get everybody? One, two, three. Godfrey. Dalver, Cabrera, I'm sorry, Foster, Dalma, then Godfrey. Wait, hold on. Can you say it? Me <laughs> <laughs> Let me show I've got my numbers right. Um, <laughs> Dalver, Cabrera, Cabrera, Cabrera Foster, 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 Dalma, Alma, Alma Godfrey. and Godfrey. Okay. okay. Uh, Thank you. Like Simon, we'll like pass. Simon says. Like Simon says. <laughs> I'm sure you're just getting more time for the question to think about it. Okay. We're stalling. <laughs> greatest strengths and greatest weakness. One minute, please. Um, Mr. Dauber. I think our greatest strength as a district is our teachers. Um, I have found in during the campaign and also in all the work that I've done in the district over the past years that we have an, uh, a, a lot of extremely innovative teachers um, who are really working hard to um, um, to take that innovation and to really uh, uh, benefit students. So for example, uh, I'm thinking of a computer science teacher at Gunn who is interested in building computer science into drama and into, uh, you know, uh, carpentry and wood shop and so forth. I mean, just really interesting ideas. What we um, lack is a way to take those ideas and to really help those innovative teachers um, get the resources that they need in order to do to do them, to reach out to the um, connections outside of the district um, that would help be able to help them out. As, as uh, Jane was talking about, we, our connections to Stanford and Foothill and so forth are, are, really, uh, are really weak. Um, and a way to take those innovations then and lift them up and propagate them across the district. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry for that quick time, but we just want to get as many of these out. Um, Mr. Cabrera, one minute. Yeah, I agree that our students are one of our most amazing strengths. Uh, I mean, our teachers. <laughs> and then to add to that, that our students' achievement is, um, is un un unparalleled in many ways. I mean, we have some of those amazing students here, and the achievement and ability to be one of the best schools in the nation is amazing. One aspect that's important to know that comes with that is the funding. We do have amazing funds that come from, you know, property taxes and other locations that we need to make sure are used properly, and that is an important role for the board. Um, weaknesses, you know, I feel that in ensuring that there's more, you know, interactivity with the board and so that the community's uh, viewpoint is reflected in the board is essential. I feel that we need to be addressing, you know, when I talk to students, they want more real-life skills you know, that are incorporated not just in classes but also outside of class and how they can get them. Um, everything from taxes to, you know, job hunting to, you know, um, dealing with renting cars, etc. And then from there, um, you know, obviously the assessments, you know, really evaluating and figuring out how we can improve our assessment systems. Thank you. Ms. Foster. I think our greatest asset is our students. I'm thinking yesterday I was at a campaign event um, and the daughter of one of the women there was just sketching with, just with a, a, a pen in her hand and making the most exquisite drawing I had ever seen on one of my flyers. And I was thinking about the talents ranging from art to coding to writing to math. We have incredible, we have incredible students. And we also have students who are incredibly giving um, to one another and respectful to one another. And I really appreciate very much um, the kinds of students that we have in our district. I think our greatest weakness as a district is that we are so good. And there's a saying that sometimes the biggest obstacle to being great is being good. And it creates a little bit less urgency, I think, sometimes, a little bit less impetus to innovate than we otherwise might. Um, so I believe that it also, at the same time, creates a certain amount of stress and pressure on um, being such world changers for every single one of our students that if they feel that they haven't cured cancer by senior year, that they must be a failure. Ms. Dunn. So, um, so I'm not just going to say that the school district has one strength. 
I'm going to go for uh, this school district has amazing students. If you've never been to a ropes presentation in uh, Connections at JLS, you, you, you need to do it. You need to do it because it is an unbelievable experience and a very humbling one. Uh, I wish I could be doing half of that at the double the age. Um, the second thing is teachers. Uh, we have teachers here that, that inspire our students in a way that I will never be able to thank enough and they've inspired my kids. Um, in terms of, oh, and another asset, our amazing creative community. We were at the open house the other day. The art teacher didn't know how to upload all the images of, of the art pieces that, that kids have done. A, t a, t a parent said, don't worry about it. I'm coming tomorrow to your office. Now there's a full website, a whole interactive website. Um, anyway, in terms of uh, challenges, we need to assure that all our kids have a consistent um, a experience in this in, through our K-12 system. Thank you. Well, we've really come now for time for the closing statements. Ah, oh, Miss Comfy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So focus on the numbers. <laughs> a minute, yes. <laughs> okay, I'll take a minute. Um, so when I walked in tonight, there's some, behind Sara back there, there's some boards um, that have a lot of writing on them with ideas about how to meet, how to meet the goals. Um, and I thought, damn we have great personnel in this district that if you read what's on those boards back there you can see that we have people in this district who care about kids every day and are thinking about them every day what is not so great about our district is that we don't have a great systemic way to make that the center of what we do all the time we have we get tripped up on a few things on centralized versus decentralized decision making how to get community input how to respond to the community how to be completely transparent so that we don't um, you know trip over our own feet and um, and that's a and that's unfortunate we can fix that those are fixable structural things what we can't go get someplace else is the personnel that it takes to do the kind of work that's happened back there that they come together for our kids all the time and they just bring it and our kids come home and they love their teachers thank you was that okay now we can do our community calls <laughs> no no i apologize I, I i get lost a little bit sometimes in trying to watch the time and questions in order sure. 